So good news is that I finished the zipper and the skirt part fits really great. Yay! Wow, it's a, it's a zipper. Huzzah. Hey there, my name's Emma B. Thanks for coming along with me. Today I am going to be making a dress completely from scratch. So I guess it's less of like a full dress and more of like an overall skirt situation, but I want to make a very specific design and I don't know that it exists in a pattern. If it does, I haven't found it. So I figured I would make it for myself. It also gives me a little bit of experience with constructing garments on my own. I like funky clothes. Funky clothes get expensive. And as somebody who's trying to ball on a budget, I want to come up with creative ways to do that. For those of you who follow along on my Instagram, I worked with Opera Theatre St. Louis this summer on their wardrobe crew, and as part of Strike, they were getting rid of some fabric from old shows that they hadn't used. And I was able to take some of it home. And so some of that fabric is this really pretty, stretchy, jersey, blue, black, and gray argyle. And I saw it and was like, hmm, I want to make a circle skirt, but let's do something that's a little extra. And so that's where Lucille, my dress form, comes in. So currently I have a bra on Lucille. I just pinned the bra on her and then stuffed a bunch of socks to simulate sort of what my chest looked like. This is a second hand dress form I got from a retail job I worked at and they were selling one of their old display mannequins. And so this is like a men's quote unquote plus size dress form. We all know. But how active about us? So I took some pieces of this pink lining fabric I got originally for my Met Gala look but I never actually ended up using it. So I'm using it just to drape a little bit. I know there are proper draping techniques that I hopefully will learn in school when I take draping as a class. I just haven't taken the class yet. And so I got impatient and was like, let's, let's try it. And then through some trial and error yesterday, I was able to come up with this piece and figured out that if it's pinned, it will sit the way that I am wanting it to look. So what I am making is a circle skirt pinafore dress. So it's going to have a almost overall like bust and upper back with a side zipper down one side and so my plan is to have a uh, crisscross straps in the back and so it's gonna be a little longer than what you're seeing here just because my torso is longer than the dress forms but through trial and error and then also sort of testing it out on myself yesterday i was able to figure out that this is the piece i ended up sewing an extra piece on there before adding a gathering stitch to confirm that it would sit correctly i think the plan is going to be to cut two pieces mirrored pieces of this large piece that I made yesterday and that should give me my top. I'm also going to be cutting an extra half inch around the piece itself because I didn't account for seam allowance when I was draping, which I think is pretty common practice. When you're buying like a mass produced pattern or you're designing one for fashion design, typically the seam allowance is added into the pattern already. Like it's a 3 8 inch seam allowance majority of the time. With costume design though, which is where I'm sort of leaning career wise, and at least I think is the direction I want to go in, seam allowance isn't added to the pattern most of the time because it gives you the opportunity to adjust it as you're creating an item because you want more seam allowance left behind in case you alter it for a different performer down the line especially if you're making something for stock it also makes it easier when you're inexperienced like me making clothes for yourself because if you mess up it's easier to fix <laughs> it's easier to alter it if you've got more hidden in the seam to then alter and also with fashion design, you have to think about the fact that you're going to be often making this pattern to then mass produce the clothing. And if you make one shirt that has an extra half inch of seam allowance around all sides, that's not much of a cost loss, but if you're making 300 shirts with half an inch of extra seam allowance everywhere, that's a bunch of extra fabric you're then having to pay for. And so obviously it makes more sense there, but since it's technically, you know, couture because it's handmade specifically to me, I can mess around with the seam allowance a little bit more. So I think I'm going to do that half inch of seam allowance everywhere rather than the 3 eighths because the math is easier for me. And also it does give me a little bit of extra wiggle room. In my last thrift flip video, I had a circle skirt. I ended up changing into pants, but it still has the paneling from like all the way around that made it a circle skirt in the first place. And I think I'm going to copy some of that paneling because I like the silhouette and then can then draft the pattern from there to make my circle skirt. But I'm not gonna figure that out today. I'm just doing the, the top and we're gonna cut out those pieces and see how where it goes from there. Yeah. Woo, it's Emma from the beyond the camera screen. What I'm doing here is I'm taking that pink piece of fabric that I draped on my dress form and I'm pinning it to two layers of 
the fabric I'm going to use facing each other so I get mirror images. And I'm just pinning it so that way it doesn't move because I am not organized or graceful enough to trust that it's not going to move. Sometimes I will use pattern weights, but I didn't have any at home. I usually just use the ones uh, at school. So pinning it is the best option there. And what you see me doing is cutting about a half inch away from every side. So I used a small ruler to mark out exactly where I wanted to cut. And sometimes when I do that, I will then take the pattern piece off before cutting it. But since it was two pieces of fabric, I was going to leave them together until afterwards. And then I will just do a really quick double rolled hem on the bust pieces before the next step. So the next step before, you know, hemming anything is making the waistband. Now I didn't actually use a pattern for any of this as the title of this video would suggest. Surprise, surprise. First I took my waist measurement and then added an extra two inches and then that was the width of each of the two pieces and I just ended up doing them right next to each other because it was just one less uh, piece I had to cut if it was, you know, splitting one piece into two. And then for the height, I find that skirts and dresses that have a thinner waistband work better for me than one that's wider. The wider ones tend to fold and bunch, especially on my back. It's just the way that like my hips and back sit. And so I had a pretty narrow waistband that was about two and a half inches, including seam allowance for each of the two pieces. And I found that that was the perfect size for me. But the greatest thing about making something without a pattern is that you can do literally whatever you want. So the third and final step for the process of a dress when it comes to the top, the waist, and the bottom is the bottom. So for the skirt, I really wanted to emulate a circle skirt without doing a full circle because I simply did not have enough fabric. Since this was donated fabric, I only have a limited amount and so I was working with what I had. And a lot of this was me just kind of doing mental math and some mental gymnastics, trying to figure out exactly how I wanted to make it happen. And once I made those first two rhombuses, since this was folded fabric, uh, I committed to it and that is the size I was going with. I feel like a lot of my clothing construction and figuring out costumes and alterations is just kind of guesstimating is the best word I can think of for this. And after all, this was just donated fabric and so if it ends up looking absolutely atrocious, oh well. I'll learn from it at least, and then it was a lesson, and it was a free lesson because the fabric was free, which is always really nice. And I think I'd be more inclined to use mock-ups in some of the stuff that I make, like with some muslin or some cheap fabric, if the muslin was cheaper than the actual fabric. <laughs> so this one I felt like I definitely felt pretty comfortable just kind of messing around and seeing where it took me. I ended up with seven skirt panels. Originally was gonna do six to make it even, but didn't cut the skirt panel thick enough, so I cut another one. Two waistband pieces that are gonna make the inside and outside of the waistband, and then the two overall bust straps. They're like overalls, but covering my boot. I don't know. Now that the bust pieces are hemmed on either side, I have used some gather stitching to attach it to one piece of waistband inside out. I'm gonna sandwich it with the other piece of waistband in a similar sense on this side so that once I stitch it down, the waistband pieces can be folded up and then it'll like hide all the ugly raw hem inside. So it'll look like that. This is actually the back, but... You'll see, you'll see. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. I am doing French seams on everything because again, I don't have a serger, I'm in my bedroom. I have my baby machine right here who's doing great. She yells at me sometimes if I put more than, you know, two or three layers of fabric under her, but it's okay, we love her anyway. I have sewn all the skirt pieces together into one long, continuous piece. I'm gonna sew the final one together and then I'm gonna sort of start trying to figure out how to add a zipper. Now I've watched like four or five YouTube videos on how to add a zipper along a French seam and so therefore I'm an expert. And so I'm kind of just eyeballing it. I don't, I don't really know. First I will sew this final seam out. Currently all the raw edges are facing outwards on the pattern because this fabric has a very clear front and back. So with that, first step will be to sew the final seam outwards so that way it's a full circle skirt. It's an actual like complete skirt. And then I will take it to my iron and press all the seam outwards so that I can do that second stitch down to encase the raw edges in the French seams. From there, I'll tie into a zipper. Mm -hmm. scary, I don't know. The big thing is trying to decide whether I want to have a zipper all the way up in the waistband, or if I want to stop it all the way down, and I'll use a zipper all the way up, and use a circle closure. No, honestly, I don't know. I don't want to leave a zipper all the way up in the waistband, and I'll use a zipper all the way up in the waistband. You know what I mean? I'm not necessarily a zipper all the way up in the waistband, but we'll figure it out. It'll be fine. Okay. 
hopefully when y'all, when I'm talking to y'all next, I have like more of it done. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Okay, it is a new day. All of the seaming going down the skirt is all done, and I also pressed it last night at like 11 So it all lies flat and pretty now, um, and I also left a little section unhemmed and cut for the zipper eventually, which I will not be adding until after we add the waistband and the top pieces and all the other things. I now have the entirety of the hem of the skirt, so the bottom portion rolled twice, so I folded it up once, pressed it, and then folded it up a second time, and I've also pinned all the way around. I actually will take my magnetic pin cushion to the ironing board when I'm doing rolled hems because I hate them so much, and then when I'm pressing it I can then put a couple pins in before moving on to the next section. I find it's just a lot easier that way, and then when I am sewing it, I can sort of just go through and just remove pins as I'm going, and I tend to get a cleaner finish on my seams that way. I will say some of these seamings and finishes and stuff are a little more technical than they might be normally. When I'm at school I have access to a serger and so often with a hem like this I would just take the bottom and serge it all the way around and then fold it up and hem it, but because I don't have a serger at home and I know a lot of other people do not have access to sergers if you're not part of a fashion department unless you come from a family that has a lot of seamstresses. I don't. Maybe down the line it would be smart to invest in one just for my own personal clothes because I'm finding that I want to make more and more of my own clothes. But for now, I do these different kinds of techniques to sort of work around that without having any raw edges. I also wanted to show something that just came in the mail this morning. So this is on a necklace around my neck and it is fancy snips. So if you see this hanging around my neck in any of the clips, or you see me using them, that's what it is. They're just like little scissors that a lot of seamstresses and costumers use to, you know, trim threads and that sort of thing. Because my machine has a little thread cutter on it, but it's not always the crispest. The thread will start fraying a little bit, so if I need to thread a needle, or if I need to re-thread my machine afterwards. And I also want to use this when I'm working wardrobe. When you're carrying scissors on wardrobe, they need to have a cap, so hence this. But also these are really heavy duty and should hold up to a good amount of wear. I'm such a costuming nerd, like this is this is exciting for me. Like if I walk into a wardrobe space with my belt bag and this, it's like, I know what I'm doing. Not really, but I will pretend like I do until I actually do. All right, so now I basically have the skirt done. So it's like a skirt now. Except for the waistband, we don't have to look at the waistband yet. This is gonna be a really cool item. I'm really excited to wear this, especially because I go back to school in a little over a week. So hopefully I wear this during one of days of the first week, as long as it's not hotter than the devil's armpit, like it has been. So here I am attaching the bust and waistband to the skirt. In doing so, I sewed the back of the waistband to the inside of the skirt first and then folded it over so then I, then I am top stitching the front of the waistband onto the skirt. And so that seam is very visible along the waistline and I wanted to make sure that in doing so it looked nice, which is why I left it for last because then I can actually see it as it's going through my machine and it's not the back side, which Still looks fine, but this way I know for sure that as I'm sewing it, it is going to look at least decent enough that I'm comfortable wearing it. Okay, it is nighttime, I'm in my pajamas, but I'm in like the final stretches of the garment, and that's always when I make mistakes, so I'm trying very intentionally to slow down. Because I like to rush, I get excited, because all the like harder stuff is out of the way. And so now it's just like finishing touches which is what makes things look good. I'm trying very intentionally to slow down. Okay, so good news is that I finished the zipper and the skirt part fits really great. Yay! So um, the bad news part of the good news is that the straps are just like a little, a, li a little, a little long. I think I overestimated how long my torso is. Originally the straps were all one long piece. I think what I'm gonna do is just make a new seam at the shoulders and then hopefully it should actually fit as like a full, a full dress. 
All right, and here is the final dress. After way too many tries, fixing and resizing the straps, I finally have a dress that fits. I am so happy with how this turned out. I cannot wait to style this a bunch of different ways. I feel like this is a really versatile piece, and it's long enough in the skirt that I can wear biker shorts underneath, which is usually my prereq for a skirt getting a lot of use, just because that's what's most comfortable for me. And it is also short enough that if it's warmer out, I'm still gonna be comfortable, especially because I can pair different clothing items underneath. So I could wear a turtleneck underneath this in the winter, but I also can wear a tank top underneath it like I am right now. I'll say this skirt, because it is a heavier like weight fabric, has a really good twirl when I'm spinning. So I'm really excited with how this turned out. Thank y'all so much for coming along. If you like this video, be sure Sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see y'all next time. Toodles! Why are you kidding me? I wasn't recording? <sighs> Fine.